I'm Jim Vanderkyle. In this video, you will learn some of the secrets of professional caricaturing done at theme parks, private parties, and business conventions. I'm going to concentrate entirely on the profile quick sketch because I believe this is the fastest and easiest method to do. The reason for this approach is that the more cartoons you can draw, the more money you can make, which is one of the main purposes of this video, applying artistic skill to earn a living. You'll end up being the life of the party drawing caricatures whether or not you charge for it or just want to dazzle your friends and family with your new ability. I will show you what materials you need to get started, step-by-step -step procedures for drawing the head and body, and how to create a funny situation, the gag. Lastly, I will give you some advice on how to cash in on your newly developed skill. Okay, what do we need to get started? The nice thing about caricaturing is that you need only a few supplies. Great, isn't it? You can turn a small investment like this into a nice, tidy profit. First of all, there's paper. The kind I use most often is the type you buy at your local printing and paper supply store. It's inexpensive and of good quality. Paper comes in different weights and sizes. For our purposes, we are going to use 110 pound white index card stock. It's heavy enough to absorb the marker and durable enough to take some abuse from the customer. Pens. The kind I use most often is a design marker, the 229LF with tapered tip. These can be bought at most art stores. You get a nice thick and thin quality with a design pen that's hard to find in other pens. Now you need a good drawing support. Get a nice sturdy drawing board like this. Put a rubber placement on top, staple or tape it down. This allows for a nice firm cushion for better thick and thin lines. Slight give of the cushion gives you a nice thin and thick line. In this section, we will cover the finer points of caricature, proportions of the normal head versus the caricatured head, and step-by-step -step procedure for drawing the fast sketch with examples of real people and subjects. Caricature defined in the dictionary is a pictorial representation in which a subject's distinctive features are deliberately exaggerated or distorted to produce a comic or grotesque effect. Now for our purposes, exaggeration for a grotesque effect will often offend your customer and ultimately lose you money. People at parties want to be amused and even flattered, so the trick is to create a comic effect that stretches the features but does not offend. Ladies can be especially offended, so be careful with them. The guys, as a general rule, can take a bit more abuse, but still be cautious. You still have to make a judgment as to how they might react. You want your subject to laugh at his likeness and not be outraged by it. It helps to know a little bit about portrait drawing and normal proportions, so I really recommend a good how-to book on this subject. Briefly, here is an example of a so-called normal head with average proportions. Caricature is learning to see where a person's features distort and you can do this by comparing them to this head. Now the eyes are about halfway between the top of the head and the bottom of the chin. The nose ends up being between the eyebrow line and the bottom of the chin. The mouth where the two lips are separated are about a third from the uh, bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. And the ear placement is approximately halfway between the front of the head to the back of the head. A lot of times beginners uh, uh, make the mistake of making the ear too far into the back of the head, so you need to leave an, enough room for the back of the head in order to make a correct proportion drawing. With this particular face, which we are going to compare with the normal head, we're going to find how the proportions are different. You're going to see that the, uh, the top of the head is extended compared with the bottom of the chin, which is a little bit more squashed. We're going to see that the nose is also a little bit larger than the normal nose. Uh, the proportions of the mouth right here is also a lot uh, different than you would find in the normal head. And it also the placement of the ear is a little bit further back because of the squash of the skull. When looking at a subject, I want you to look for the squash and stretch of the features. Sum the subject up in your mind before you begin to draw and notice the overall shape of the head and how all the features relate to each other. Try to make them into some kind of design. The person may remind you of some animal or you might get some other strong impressions. 
The point is to be conscious of what you see before you begin to draw. Now I will demonstrate the step-by-step -step procedure for drawing the profile sketch. This formula is time-tested and will enable you to complete a caricature head in about 30 seconds, only after lots of practice. Don't be afraid to go back to this section and play it over and over again until you get it right. Okay, the procedure goes something like this. We're going to start with the nose. into the mouth, teeth, inside of mouth, lower lip, chin, and we have the bottom half of the face. Now you go into the eyes next, eyebrows, forehead, hair, hairline, ear, jawline, and the rest of the hair. Let me repeat that for you once again. Start with the nose, to the mouth, back to the chin, into the eyes, eyebrows, forehead, hair, ear, jaw, and the back of the head. There's a definite method to this formula. You have to start out at this point, do the nose, into the mouth, chin, go back into the eyes, eyebrow, work your way up to the top and do the rest of the head and ear. And if you constantly do this often enough times, this is where the speed will come in. Now I'm going to draw a generic woman in one motion. Let's go over the component parts in detail. Okay, the nose is usually done in about two to three strokes. You have upturned noses, bumpy noses, larger nostrils, very extended large noses, very angular noses, all kinds of noses. But basically, you want to do it in two to three strokes. The mouth is done in about three or five strokes. What you do is you start with the upper lip, draw the lip line, lower lip, and go right into the chin. Here's an example of a mouth that's open. Draw the lip line here, maybe add a little shadow in the corner. Draw the teeth inside of the mouth, lower lip, and into the chin again. Um, if you want someone with slightly larger teeth, draw that lip, lip line, shadow, bring the, the teeth out a little bit, lower lip back. Someone who has slightly larger lips would look like this. I want to add a second line in there and a large lower lip. Be conscious of the form of the lips. You have to actually feel that your pen again is on the surface of the skin. It helps you describe the form much better and you get a more convincing feel of the, uh, the form that you're trying to draw. The eyes will take about six to seven strokes. What we're going to do is start with the top of the eye which is the uh, top eyelid, the eyeball itself, the pupil, maybe a little shadow in here, and the top eyelid, and go right into the eyebrow right after that. Different types of eyes include, well, let's say a larger eyelid on top here, pupil, and eyebrow. Um, a woman's eye would look something like this. What you want to do is make it more feminine looking. 
more glamorous, thicker eyelashes, a little longer, and thinner eyebrows usually. Um, some people have very protruding eyes, so you might want to do something like this. Be very careful and conscious of the types of eyes that are out there. Don't make them all the same. Find out what's going on with the uh, their subject in front of you and describe that form as best as possible. Squinty eyes, people who are laughing a lot. It looks something like this. That's all there is to it. You know, if you have someone laughing, it gives a nice feel to it. Older people usually have their eyes closed like that when they laugh. There's a lot of wrinkles. And if you're going to be drawing wrinkles on older people, don't go overboard with them. Just a few here and there just to give the indication of age. Next is the hair. The first thing we want to be conscious of when we're drawing the hair is the actual shape of the hair, which includes the shape of the head. Now, on a man, let's say the shape of the head might come to a point like this. You have your ear here. And you want to keep this constantly in mind while you're drawing. So as you're drawing, you're feeling that hair and trying to actually almost like combing it. And, and nice, fast, short strokes for people with shorter hair. You got to really get a real rhythm going here. Hair is not easy to do. Here's another example. Someone with short hair. Here's the ear. Okay, of course here would be the face. Um, on a woman's hair, for instance, um, you want to get a real, someone has long hair, you want to get a real feeling of the rhythm. Um, let's see here. Different types of hair for women. Curly hair here. A little feather touch. But as you see, you get the feel for the strokes, the rhythm of the hair. Try to get that texture. If you have a bald-headed person, here's the top of his head. Say so here's his nose. Place the ear. Give your give your uh, yourself a landmark to go to. So let's say his head, his hair is going to be lying somewhere like this. He's got maybe some sideburns. Put his hair in like this. A few straggling hairs. That's how you can draw a bald person. Now, what about facial hair? Okay, if we're going to be drawing someone's beard, again, you have to look for the design. Let's say this person had a beard. Where's, what's the shape of the, uh, the beard? Basically, let's say it's going to look something like that. Okay, so you keep that in mind while you're drawing. And with simple strokes, depending on which way the beard is going, it could be going this way, just draw it in with nice, definite stroke lines. Go back and fill in some of the gaps if you have to. And there you have a beard, very simple. Let's try that again. Someone's nose, face, ear. Okay, you got the mouth, it looks something like this. Okay. That's how you would draw a beard. Okay, the ear, a very simple shape. Basically get that oval shape like this and draw the inside of the ear. It's two or three strokes, not much. 
There's different shapes of ears. There's very long ears. Do it something like that. Very small ears. And uh, not too hard to figure out. Sometimes people will come by and say, hey, why'd you put a two in the middle of my ear for? Okay, now that we've seen the formula, let's put it all together with a live subject. And we'll start with John. Hi, Jim. Hi, John. Okay, the thing I noticed with John, I guess, was we're going to emphasize is his hair, his, the shape of his nose, and his eyes. Okay, we're going to start with the nose. With the shape of the nostril. Upper lip. Smile, John. Inside of the mouth. Chin. And the eyes. A few eyelashes here and there. Eyebrows are rather close to the eye, uh, to the uh, top lid, forehead, and the hair. Keep the hair nice and loose. Notice the shape of the hairline. And here's the ear, jawline, and the back of the head. And there you go. Okay, thanks a lot, John. Now let me introduce you to Chris. Come on, Chris, have a seat right up here. And look straight ahead against that wall, okay? Now, with kids, um, we're going to be paying careful attention to the shape of the head. There's going to be a much larger forehead and back of the head, and the uh, area around the mouth and the chin are, are very squashed in, in comparison with an adult. So here we go. Try to pretend that your pen is right on the surface of the skin. And you want to be thinking cute the whole time. Go for some nice large eyes to emphasize the cuteness. And maybe some eyelashes in there. Kids usually don't have uh, heavy eyebrows, so you don't want to emphasize the eyebrows too much. Nice big forehead, the hairline, the ear, a little cowlick in the back there. And he has a special haircut, so we're going to try to emphasize that. There we go. Chris, thanks a lot. Let me now introduce you to Laurel. Hi, Laurel. Okay. Now, with adult uh, female heads, we're going to emphasize the eyes, obviously the eyelashes in this case, and the long hair. And with uh, Laurel, I think we're going to try to emphasize the nose. We've got a nice uh, sweep of the nose that we're going to try to capture. Okay. Here's the nose, lips, try to put a smile on your subject, even if they don't smile, because you want to make them look good. You've got to try to think all the time, glamour, beauty, he's got nice blue eyes, so we're going to leave this area lighter, leave it blank. Capture the shape of that eyebrow. Top lid. Now her hair is falling very flat on her face, so you want to make sure you we capture that. Get a real feel for that hair. Nice long strokes. And she has a few freckles, and we're going to put those in on, as a finishing touch. Okay, thank you, Laurel. All right, let me introduce you now to Nicolette. 
Have a seat. Okay. Now with uh, children, again, you want to emphasize the cuteness of the figure. She's a little bit older than our previous subject, so we're going to try to capture a little bit more maturity in the face. Okay, we'll start with the nose. Nice small nose. And smiling. There you go. Notice the cheeks coming out a little bit. Eyelashes. Even on little girls, you want to emphasize the eyelashes. Eyebrows. Notice the shape of the hair. You want to capture the shape of the hair. Try to get that feathered look to it. Nice loose strokes. It's the only way to capture hair. And a few finishing touches and we're finished. Thank you, Nicolette. Now I'm going to show you some additional faces from photographs. Okay, for this character, what I'm going to try to determine is the whole shape of the face um, along with the hat. Uh, the nose should be emphasized, the shape of the mouth and the heavy eyebrows along with the tilt of the ear. So, nice big nose. And the lips. Teeth. Lips. He's got a very small chin. A little bit squashed. With the mustache. Mustaches are real great because they add character to a face. And smiling eyes. Nice thick eyebrows. Glasses done in one motion. And let's go for the ear right around here. Get that in right away. Now, doesn't have much hair, so what we might want to do is just put a few dots here, indicate that he has some hair. If you're doing hats, you might want to tilt the paper just a bit and try to get that in one motion like that. Cleaner the line, the better it'll look. And this also done in one motion. Make sure that overlaps the skull. Put a few dots for hair. And A few extra little details put in, show some age there. And we're all set. Babies are very difficult to do unless you pay close attention to the form. We're doing an adult, uh, compared to an adult head, the baby's head is a lot more compressed from the eyeball down. The, the jaw apparently has not grown, and so there's very little growth there. Um, so what we're going to do is exaggerate the forehead mostly and the cuteness of the eyes. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to draw a nice small nose. Okay, and then we're going to draw this cheek line, which is very delicate. Lips. And this goes almost straight across. Emphasize the eyes. This is a girl, so we might want to put a few eyelashes on there. Nice, round forehead. Now with babies, it's a good idea to place the ear so you have a place to go to with your pen when you're doing the hairline. Again, with hair, try to capture the texture of it. Okay, when your mind 
know where you're going to go with the pen. So make a look, if you have to, make a little dot here so that you know where that pen's going to end up or else sometimes you're going to end up with a very, very squashed back of the head. And if you notice with babies that they have a very large uh, area back here that you want to emphasize. Okay, so we're going to come over here, a few extra hairs, and nice round strokes. A few touch-ups, and we got your basic baby. Now, also what I want to emphasize is the fact of the way a baby's cheek goes. <clears throat> What you need to do is be aware that there's sort of a, an oval or a circle in this area of the chin or of the cheek area and jaw, and that the eye rests on that circle to give you an idea of how this construction goes. And if you've got some kind of round form going here, you know you're doing pretty well. Keep the nose small. Sometimes uh, you'll notice that there's a large gap between, because the cheek overlaps the, uh, the mouth area, that you want to make sure that you have this gap in there and bring the lip down and small chin and having this go back this way. Okay. Now with this subject, I'm going to emphasize the shape of the cranium and uh, of course we're going to accentuate some of the wrinkles uh, the smile, the mustache, and the squinty eyes, and the, and the longer ears. I think that when people get older, their ears still grow. I think that's the reason why um, you see in older people their ears. So we're going to exaggerate that point. Okay, uh, okay, we got a nice, good shape for a nose. Okay, and. What I'm going to do is draw the smile and lightly indicate the mustache like this to show that there's not much color into it. Okay, and we got a nice little round ball for a chin, a little jowl line, and squinty eyes. Crow's feet, a little bit of a eyebrow, and now we're going to draw the cranium. I'm going to try to do that in one sweeping motion, so you have to know where you're going to end up. Why don't we put the ear in to give us some kind of guideline and put a few little marks in here to help us see where we're going to end up. Okay, so ready? Pretend that your pen is right on the surface. Okay, so we've got a nice shape to that. Now we're going to indicate uh, some of the hair that's inside. Okay, and a few up here. Okay. A few little touch-up uh, strokes and we're all done. Now with this subject, uh, what I want to do is accent the long shape and also how all the features are sort of pushed to the front. Everything seems to be on a vertical plane. Okay, so we're going to start off with the nose. And it's not a very big nose. And teeth. Chin. Now his cheekbone is pretty high up there, so we'd like to emphasize that. Eyes. 
Nice dark eyebrows. And the forehead. So you notice how everything is pretty much on this vertical line. And now we'll do the hair. Be conscious of the hair design. Ear. Jawline. And the back of the head. Again, you want to feel the form of the cranium inside the hair. Okay. Okay, just a few little touch ups. In this section, I will break down the procedure for drawing the several bodies used in the quick sketch caricature. The face should take about 20 to 30 seconds, and then the body itself should take only around 10 to 15 seconds. Bear in mind that this can be accomplished only after plenty of practice. To get this fast, the body is reduced to its most economical means. The simpler the drawing, the faster you can go, and the more readable it is. The goal here is for communication. You don't need a lot of detail like watches and buttons. This only slows you down. If it reads as a body, then you've done your job. The bodies are rather difficult to get a feeling for, so you need to practice and fill up pages and pages of bodies until you get it right. I recommend that you slow down the tape and analyze the strokes to get a better feel of the process. Practice until it becomes second nature. There are only a handful of bodies used in the one minute caricature. The most basic figure used is the seated figure, which can be converted to a running figure by adding a second leg. Now, it's a good idea to understand the basic structure of a body. When you draw, you are thinking of this underlying structure to give more convincing form. Otherwise, it will just be a tangle of lines that won't read well as a cartoon. Think of the body as a bean shape with cylinders for legs and arms. The final product will be flatter or more two-dimensional, but you still get a feeling of the three dimensions if you keep these forms in mind. Now I'll show you the procedure for drawing the body. We're going to start out with the arm and hands, shirt line, stomach, back, and the leg. I'll do that again for you. Get the nice arch of the back and the leg. Different ways to treat the, the leg and feet, you can do it this way. And one stroke. Or you can just do a little loop at the end to indicate the foot. Um, there's also a different way to treat the arm. And you put that little thumb up there. That's an extra way of treating the hand. Okay, now if you want to add a, uh, if you want to do a running figure, all we have to do is add the second leg. And there you go. You have your running figure. You're going to use these two uh, bodies interchangeably and throughout your whole um, performance when you go out to do these functions. There's your second leg, second leg, all in one motion. Okay, to break it down and go a little bit slower, here's the process for just doing the arm and hand. I want to do that shirt line. Maybe three or four fingers if you want, you can also do it this way. Put that thumb up there. It might be useful in some situations where he's holding something. But basically, all you need to do is have this general, general character. You have to practice this 
a lot because this is a very difficult feeling to get uh, going with. <clears throat> okay, so once you've got the arm and hand, you want to start into the stomach area. So it's just a little curve right here. Get the, uh, the back of the, of the back right there with the arch. And that's all you have to do for the body. Just make sure that you have this type of curve to it. it gives more, uh, more of a feeling of a body that way, rather than just having it straight up and down. Um, and then when you're doing the, the feet and the, and the legs, what you want to do is do it in one motion. OK, that will indicate the pants or just the leg. And you draw the, the foot that way. And then when adding the second foot, very definite lines. And then you have the running figure. Another way of drawing the running figure and very fast, if you can practice this, OK, let's say you have the body, and you try to do it in one motion. And you get that feeling. This can go real fast if you can practice this. It's a little bit sloppier, but again, it reads as a cartoon. It reads as, as someone running. OK, that's basically it for the uh, running and seated figure. Now, a standing figure is basically the same as a seated figure, except what we're going to do is lower the legs a little bit. Some shoelaces. Um, I'll do that again for you. OK. Now, if you want them facing forward a little bit more, you can handle it this way. Very simple. You might want to have the hands out here. But basically, you want to have this kind of line of action or curve to it. So you draw the body. Try to do it in one motion. As you see, it's very simple. Reads as a cartoon, reads as a body. And that's what you need. That's the most important thing. In some cases, we want the, the figure to be kicking something. So I will show you what a kicking figure would look like. Basically, OK, we'll have the, the body like this. And we're going to pull that leg out straight, bend the foot back like that. You know, if he's a soccer player, I put a little mark like that, a little speed lines. And there you have the kicking body. Do that again. Pull it straight out. Put a little shadow under there. And some speed lines. Sometimes you'll need the figure to be swinging golf clubs or baseball bats, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Start out with the arm first. Then go into the body just the way you would with the running figure. Let's say it's a baseball bat. Add the second hand here. There you have a swinging figure. Add your speed lines, and you're all set. OK, let's say, for instance, it's a tennis racket. Same thing. Instead of uh, putting the second arm up that way, just have it down here. And he's swinging a tennis racket. OK, I'll do it one more time for you. Bring the arm out. The legs. Second arm here. And your speed lines. 
There you go. Now there are several uh, types of female bodies. What I'm going to show you first is um, converting the regular running body into a female figure. Basically, all you're doing is adding a little bit more curves and female anatomy to it. And you have the female figure. Nice arch of the back. And you have the female figure. There's a different variations now. You could, what you want to do is uh, point the toes. So what we'll have, same top half. but add uh, the point of toes. It gives it a little bit more of a feminine touch to it. Um, seated figure. Say, for instance, you're doing a secretary. Put her in a skirt. You have the chair under here. That's how we would draw a female figure sitting down with the toes pointed for that extra feminine feeling. Now, for one of our more popular items, we're gonna draw the beach body. Now, this goes over real well with the ladies. If you say if they like the suntan, well, this is how we do it. Okay, and that's basically it for the uh, beach body. To break it down a little bit, we got that right shoulder down to the stomach area, legs. Now you have to keep in mind the whole shape of the body when you're drawing the legs, torso, and chest. So you have to practice these bodies quite a bit before you get it down right. People start out doing these bodies, you get these really weird proportions. Especially if you want to do them fast. There's a tendency to distort a little bit more. For instance, here. Nice thin waist. Belly button, chest, arms, and hand. Keep a nice flow to it. Keep in mind the whole shape of the body while you're drawing. The best way to do this is to practice over and over and over again. It takes hundreds and hundreds of these to get this figure right. Okay, the ladies like to dance quite a bit, so we'll give you a dancing body to work with. Start out. With a more frontal view, draw a little skirt here, legs, and the arms outstretched. Again, you just want to get a feeling for the arms and hands, so you don't want to get too detailed with it. Just as long as it reads as a cartoon, reads as a body, that's all you care about. Little speed lines that show motion, and you have a dancing body. We'll do that again. Accent the, uh, the butt a little bit there. Legs. Here's another variation on the hands. You might want to throw in a necklace. A little cleavage maybe. And you have a dancing body. One more time for you. Thin waist, curvy figure, pointed toes, high heels, and have the arms taper towards a slender wrist. Don't have the arms going out like this. Have them come to a little point like this and then draw the hands. And with the feet 
straight line here. It's basically this kind of action. Here's the calf and here's the thigh. Okay, when we're doing people who have uh, an overweight body, you want to be careful so that you don't offend him or her. So we're going to do this very delicately. When we're adding weight to a character, you do the same procedure, but you just slightly add a little bit more weight. Don't get too carried away. You might not have any friends later on. Sometimes you might be able to get away with a very grotesque body. Depends on the sense of humor of your subject. Now, if you were to draw the beach body slightly plump, just widen the proportions a bit, get those curves in, and I don't think you'll get into trouble with any of this. Okay, we're going to draw some children's bodies. Uh, keep in mind that when you're drawing a child's body, that the proportions are a little bit smaller and a little bit plumper. Not quite as plump as the, uh, the fat people. Right like this. It also depends on how you draw it in relationship to the head. He's, dry, he's riding a skateboard here. Now for the girls, say she's a ballerina dancer. Basic same body as the female, except that we're going to have a young girl's proportions and anatomy. Okay, we'll draw the girl for you again. This could, could be a dancing body, whether she's jazz dancing, ballet. Or just try to capture and get a feeling for that cute, um, small proportions that uh, the, child, the child has. If you keep that in mind, you really can't go wrong. When we're drawing babies, we're going to get real small. The proportions are going to be very small. We're going to get that feeling of a baby here, if we can try to do that. Here's a baby crawling. Get the arch of the back here. Okay. Or if a baby's sitting down, all the proportions are much, much smaller. Okay, let's say he's sitting on something. <sighs> um, let's try that crawling figure again so that you can take a look at it. Arm out there like that. One motion here for the, the arch of the back and, and the butt. He's got a shirt on, let's say. And the other knee. Get that idea of crawling. It might not be perfect anatomically, but we get the feeling that there's a crawling baby here, and that's what you need. In this section, you will learn how to draw the different components that go into a gag, what makes a gag funny, and lastly, a parade of 30 or so gags for you to use as a beginning arsenal when you go out to perform at your functions. In a caricature, it could be funny enough just to have a big head and a little body. But to really go over big, you need a gag. Sometimes, when the likeness is really weak, because the face has no outstanding features, you can make up for it by a great gag situation. You need to learn how to draw props and accessories to help create the gag. Think of props as silhouettes or profiles, with a few interior details put in. Just draw the outline and add the rest in. To explain this a little bit further, here you have the silhouette, let's say of a tennis racket, 
you have the outline of the, the silhouette, and then the interior details put in. Here's a beer mug. Here's the silhouette of it, just an outline, and the interior details. Oh, so th this whole process is basically what you're going to be thinking of when you're drawing all these extra objects that go into your, into your gag. Okay, now to show you what that would look like as a drawing, for instance, let's, let's draw um, a sports car. You have your figure in the sports car like this, and to draw it nice and fast, door, doorknob, some speed lines, smoke, and you're all done. Uh, let's say he's thinking of beer. Okay, you're thinking of that whole profile or outline. Draw the interior details. Uh, let's see, let's try a computer monitor. Keep a nice steady line on the paper. Nice bold strokes. And you have a computer. A person seeing himself playing his favorite sport will find the caricature funny because he can relate to it. If he never played tennis, he cannot identify with the picture. So learn how to draw all kinds of objects and make your subject happy. Okay, I'm going to draw a baseball player with a baseball bat. Very quickly. And you can see how quickly that's done. Very simple shape, nice bold outline. Someone, uh, let's say, for instance, holding a rifle. Draw nice and quickly bold lines. Simplify all the shapes. Use the thickness of the pen to create shadows. Use the thick and thin wherever necessary. And let's see, we have a little extra detail, put them in combat fatigues. Very simple. All right, let's say we're drawing a nurse. She's holding a needle. And we're going to make that needle very large. Adds to the whole comic effect. Draw nice bold lines. Thin line there. Use your thin lines here. The other hand. And then you have a nurse with a needle. You might want to practice your um, pen strokes when you're drawing straight lines, just spend all day doing these kind of things. Trying to get a nice, even tone to it. Try to draw light lines, thin lines, slightly darker, thick and thin. These all will help you when you're drawing these props and figures to make them more convincing and add some aesthetics to your drawing. Signs and thought bubbles are very useful for gag situations and are very easy to draw. Thought bubbles can easily, easily be done with a circle or you can do the cloud effect. There you go. Try to put yourself in a customer's shoes and imagine what he might think of or where he may be headed and write it in.
Boy-girl themes are one of the best to use because they always go over big. When you're stuck for a gag, throw in the opposite sex. You really can't go wrong most of the time. Okay. And a little heart to go along with it. Okay, now we'll draw the, the, uh, the sexy curl in the background. It should be something like this. Same beach body that we used before. Make sure that you get all the nice curves in there. Just a slightly smaller version of the beach body that we did before. All right, to continue along with the uh, person peeking over the, this, uh, whatever you call this thing over here, we don't know yet. Um, very simple. Try to keep it as simple as possible and don't get into too much detail. And don't forget the heart. Okay, for a guy, there's different ways of drawing a guy. Do whatever you like. Simplest is just having two dots for eyes. You can have the tongue hanging out if you'd like. And there you go. Just keep it very, very simple. You want to go fast with these so you don't spend too much time with it. Now, if you want it to make it look like somebody, let's say she has a boyfriend and the boyfriend has a mustache. Well, all you got to do is put a little mustache on it. If his name is Bob, call him Bob. Violent, painful, or tragic themes are funny too. Like a skier going off a cliff. Getting hit with a ball. Or missing a putt. Don't forget your cartoon accessories like music notes. Speed lines. Sweat. Sound effects. Reflections. You can get a lot of these ideas from just newspapers and comic strips. Next I'll show you around 30 or so examples of gags for you to look at. Freeze the picture with your VCR if you can and take a closer look. Breathe. 
And now some tips on speed. Drawing fast is a real plus in retail situations because, obviously, you can make more money. Also, the speed attracts more people to your booth. You'll keep them coming. They don't have to wait long and are entertained while they watch. This translates into a steady flow of cash. The first and best way to be fast is to practice and practice and practice some more. Fill up pages and pages of different bodies and heads. The more confidence you can get, the faster you're going to go. So to shave off seconds in your sketch, have a firm idea of how you want to exaggerate the head. And pick out the features you want to emphasize. As you start to finish the head, ask the person for his favorite sport or hobby. This way you can jump right into the gag without any delay. As you are finishing the gag portion, ask the name of your subject so that you can write it down without delay. The whole idea is to keep your pen moving. Hi. Hi. Okay, just look straight ahead, please. Do you have any favorite sports or hobbies? I like to go to the beach. The beach? Okay. And what's your name? Laurel. How do you spell that, Laurel? L-A-U-R-E-L. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Laurel. A few seconds here and there really pay off when you count on being paid by the piece. It could mean the difference of 10 or so drawings per hour, and that could add up to quite a few dollars. Now that you've learned these skills, how do you go about earning some money? Caricatures offer the unique opportunity to earn cash, and lots of it. Yes, you could create a living from it, as many artists have. And it's up to you as to how much money you want to earn. It can be a profitable part-time business in addition to your 9 to 5 job, or you can go at it full time. In this section, I'm going to show you the different ways of applying the art of quick caricature to several markets. First and most common are parties. Parties for businesses or private clients are bread and butter income. Types of parties include bar mitzvahs, birthdays, wedding receptions, Christmas parties, or anything else the client can think of. Businesses will have you at their company picnic or annual Christmas gigs. Here's a typical setup for a party. You need a small table and two chairs near an outlet for the light. Your drawing board, paper, and pens. Your party guest will sit opposite you, facing to the side to allow for the profile sketch. How do you get your jobs? Like any business, you must advertise. So get business cards and make up brochures to send out. Tell the world you're in business. Advertising in the Yellow Pages is an excellent idea, as well as local magazines. Print up invoices and contracts. The more professional you are, the more work you will get. And then, after a while, just the word of mouth should sustain your business. Talk to your local caterer or party planner. Maybe you can cut a deal and give them a percentage of the parties referred to you. They usually will know where they are. When you charge your client, charge by the hour and not by how many you do. And don't ever accept a job where they want you to charge each guest. That kind of situation never really works out for you or your client. Conventions are great. Sometimes companies will even fly you out and you get to do a little traveling. Basically, conventions use the same setup as private parties. You may want to target your advertising to only businesses that will be at your nearest convention center. You can get a list of these clients from the center itself. Again, once the word gets out through distributing business cards at these functions and by word of mouth, you will acquire more and more work and then be on your way. Art fairs and theme parks require a retail capability. You need a cash box or register and a booth or portable setup. You must have signs with samples and prices, bags for merchandise, and various other things to keep you in business for your stay. 
You can get a list of arts and crafts fairs in your area from your art supply stores. It's usually a newsletter or magazine that specializes in such things, or at the back of major art magazines like American Artist, under art fairs. Once you find your location, apply for a space. There's usually a fee and a percentage of the profits. Sometimes uh, they appear in malls, so don't forget the mall as a likely place to sell your wares, especially around Christmas time. Also try boat and auto shows, or just about any trade show. These can be great markets, too. For more permanent setups, you might want to do business at vacation resorts and amusement parks. There may be someone already there, so you might want to apply for a job and get some experience, or find your own theme park and create your own business. If the attendance is great, the profits will be tremendous. Your setup is going to be more permanent in these cases, so it's a good idea to use an overhead projector or video camera and monitor like they do at this major theme park. It allows for your guests to see what's going on and serves as great advertising as well as entertainment while they wait. Well, it's time to come to a close. It's up to you to practice as much as possible to perfect your technique and develop your own personal style. You may want to take some extra drawing classes to help you draw better. Practice working with photographs first. Then you may want to work your way up to live subjects like your friends and family and get some feedback. When you're confident enough, try booking yourself a party. Do it for free. This way you can avoid the pressure of being paid because it can be quite nerve-wracking. When you feel that you can give a client his money's worth, that's when you should charge. Well, whatever you do, I hope this video has helped you to learn to draw caricatures and get you started earning some extra cash. So have fun with it and good luck.